what do you do as a director when you direct somebody like Donald Sutherland in a scene? I mean, do you just basically at this point just sit back and watch? Well, that's what I said. I said, what do you do? You do nothing. Yeah. But it doesn't work like that. You know, I'm working right now with Ann Archer, the wonderful Ann Archer. We're doing a virtual theater piece. And when you work with actors, you know, that have worked so much and that are, you know, legends and Donald is and Andy Garcia and, you know, what can you say? But they long for you to say something. They want to say. And, and so I always find a little something to say. And they welcome it. Uh, and they're happy. And they're happy to hear it. So I was, you know, I mean, I can't even tell you. That I was in shock that 100% of the actors, the wonderful actors that I called upon to come tell this story, took 100% of my notes. I was like, this is great. What was the most challenging scene you had to shoot in a film from your perspective? Oh, well, the rape scene, of yeah. course. We waited and I had allocated a whole day for that. I, I knew I was like, we're going to take it easy. We're going to take our time. Except for the fact that the two days before we shot the last day, there were thunderstorms in New Jersey. And every time there's a thunderstorm, you have to stop shooting and you have to wait. And so we lost time. And so it turned out now that I only had half a day to shoot the rape scene and I had to change locations. I had to go to the bus stop, go back to the bus stop. And it was a very challenging day. I remember early in the day thinking, I have no idea how I'm going to do this. I had 27 setups and I walked wow. onto the set. My first AD and my cinematographer said, no way, it's not going to happen. You have to prepare yourself. You've got to cut. And I just, I don't know. I heard a voice inside myself. I said, just watch me. We're going to make this happen. And I was very forceful that day, as I have been every other day. But I, I direct with more, you know, calm and nurturing. But that day I was just, okay, we do this here, that, this there. I was just, you know, let's go. And uh, I said, we're going to be out of this location at 11.30 p.m. And it's 11.25. I'm missing one shot. And I said, nope, bring police car here. Do that was my only chance. I would have never got that shot. Let's do it. I ended it exactly at 11.30 p.m. We moved to the beach, to the location where we we're going to shoot the rape in, in the car. And we did not do a meal penalty. We were right on time. I started to shoot, except my director of photography said, no, we have to stop shooting at 4.30 because the light is going to come up and you're not going to get mm -hmm. any shots. I'm like, nope. We're going to blacken the car windows and we're going to shoot everything I need. And it was just, you know, it was tough because it was the rape. People were very upset. They would walk away. Nobody wanted to. It was a closed set. It was outside. But I was very, you know, I didn't want anybody to get hurt. And of course, we had a fight coordinator, but I was always moving the pillow for the head of Abby so she wouldn't get hurt. Um, and I was very like on it. And from 4.30 to 5.30, I went in with the steady cam, and I said, move it here, move it there, do this, do that. And we finished exactly at 5.30. It was apocalyptic as the sun was coming up, and it's a wrap. And I never ended up going to get another shot for the movie. I ended up getting everything that I needed in those you know, five weeks of shooting. Uh, so it went really, really well. It's amazing how sometimes things fall together in those ways and sometimes with the happy accidents and all those other things how and 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 you know people who aren't necessarily in the industry don't always n know exactly how some of these things come together in in such a way sometimes you got to take a gazillion shots to get something and then sometimes just falls and sometimes stressful situations like this force you to actually it, it brings out everybody in the right way you know what i mean it's just it's it's interesting how these things sometimes just fit together like that yeah. it was great energy that day and, and we got it all done it was great it was great shoot great cast great story i'm really excited and it was very well received in santa barbara and last week in tampa and i'm excited for a lot of people to see it when it comes out Oh, the reviews, the reviews have been just fantastic for those who've seen it on the festival circuit so far. And we got one yesterday that came out with ebert.com. And I guess that we were told Forbes is coming out this week. It's going to be good. And people are really responding to the movie. It makes me really happy. Kind of bring this full circle. Is there anything that you've learned from watching your father work that you feel you've carried into these films? Yes, my father was a tremendous human being. He cared more about people than power. 
And so he always picked love. He always took the high road. He never badmouthed anybody. It was always about the art. It was always about the work. He considered producing being an art form, not business. And uh, so I think he was an artist at heart. And uh, my mother was too. My mother was a singer and a dancer uh, and also had a great heart. I think my parents, my mother, I think, tried to rescue every animal in New Jersey. I think my parents um, led with their hearts. And recently I was doing an interview uh, for high school for my 13 year old. And they said, you know, what's the most important thing that you hope he'll retain as he goes into high school? And I said, his humanity. I hope his sense of empathy. That's the most important thing, because I think that that's what I got from my parents. And that's what I want to pass down. So what's next for you? You mentioned that you've got another big project in the works. Is it something you're allowed to talk about or is it still kind Not of? Not yet because it's announced, it's announced next week. Oh, um, it's going to be a big announcement. It's a big movie and I have um, a couple of other movies that I'm developing as well, some comedies. Uh, I'm excited about all of it. Equally, all of it. Uh, I think that the next few years I will be doing, you know, several movies and keep telling stories and also keep championing my son who also is a filmmaker and um, so I told him we're either going to be preparing something or we're going to be in the midst of doing it shooting it or putting it together or marketing but we'll be in one of all those phases and this next month I'm also going to teach quite a lot which I'm excited about uh, I'm excited to go to Cannes I'm excited to go to the Ischia Film Festival with Miranda's Victim. And uh, there's another big film festival we get in that I can't announce just yet. Um, so I'm excited about all of it. You know, it's uh, it's great to be able to be creative and be surrounded by the people that you love. Well, we'll look forward to hearing about the next big project once you're allowed to announce it. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us, Michelle. Thank you so much. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Michelle Danner.